One of the main reasons why I got this bad boy was to cut. Let's see how it performs. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Brett, and this is my laser garage. Thanks for coming back if you're subscribed, and if you're just now finding the channel, thanks for stopping by. Today, we're gonna take a look at the cutting capabilities of my new Bolt Pro 32 from Thunder Laser. Come along with me, and we'll see how the Bolt Pro 32 handles a variety of common materials in the laser world, like MDF core plywood, birch plywood, hardwoods, cedar, and eighth inch and quarter inch clear acrylic. We'll also try to push the bolt to its limits by cutting some half inch hardwood and some half inch plywood. Will we succeed? Stick around to find out. The baseline for most of our cut tests today are gonna to be these material test cards. These test cards are produced in Lightburn and are an extremely useful tool to dial in your laser settings. You can vary settings like speed, power, and with the bolts RF laser tube, frequency, which we'll talk more about later. These cards are gonna help us figure out what speeds and what power levels each specific material will cut at. I recommend running these tests on any new laser in order to figure out what its capabilities are on specific materials. If you want more info on how to set up these tests, I'll link to an instructional video by Lightburn in the description below. And I'm also gonna link a cut and engraving test version put out by Thunder Laser, which are also really useful. For these tests, I'll be running the stock two and a half inch lens that comes with this laser. I found this to be a great general purpose lens which offers great cutting and engraving capability. We'll talk a little bit more about lenses in a bit when I discuss laser maintenance. The Bolt Pro 32 comes equipped with an onboard air pump which has a high and low pressure setting. One simple upgrade I've made to this machine is the addition of my shop air compressor to the air assist setup. The stock air pump works good, but I found that most lasers can use a little extra power in the air department. Now setting up this upgrade couldn't be easier. Basically, all I had to do was unplug the stock air pump and hose, then just connect my air compressor to the back of the machine and plug it in. Just make sure that the external air compressor is plugged in a different circuit than the laser to avoid tripping your electrical breaker. The air pressure is still regulated through the stock regulator and digital display here up front. That's it. No solenoid replacement or wiring. It's really plug and play, super easy. Adding an air compressor allows me to run about 30 PSI when cutting, versus about five PSI maximum I was getting from the stock air pump. One other thing, it's also really important to make sure that the air assist nozzle is adjusted correctly so the maximum amount of air is actually hitting where the laser is firing. Adjusting this is really simple by loosening these two screws here and adjusting the nozzle up or down. Obviously, power levels are also gonna come into play during our test cuts. As a business owner, I try to cut or engrave at the highest possible speeds. It's crucial for us to get products produced fast. For that reason, I'll be pushing the power percentages very high, even up to 100%. The Bolt Pro and other Thunder lasers, for that matter, are able to run at these high power levels safely and efficiently. That's one of the great benefits of having an RF tube. One of the other benefits of having an RF tube is that you have the ability to change the frequency output of the laser between 1 and 25 kilohertz. I learned this in a video from Chris from Thunder Laser USA where he goes through some cut testing on the original bolt, and I'll link that down below. Like him, I've run test cards at various frequency levels, leaving power and speed constant, and found best cutting results when running at a lower frequency. To set the bolt's frequency in light burn, all you have to do is this. In your cut settings, click on the advanced tab, and then click override PWM frequency, then enter your desired frequency level between one and 25 kilohertz. Finally, I think this is extremely important to talk about, maintenance. In order to get the highest cutting capability out of your Thunderbolt, it has to be maintained properly. You will never cut at the highest possible level if your laser's optics are not clean and aligned properly. Luckily, alignment is typically spot on straight from the factory on these Thunder machines, so not much to worry about there. But it's still important to check it upon setup and every once in a while to make sure it's still dialed in. Also, cleaning the mirrors and lens on this laser is extremely easy. The focus lens is simple to remove with these two thumb screws here and can be cleaned with 99% alcohol and a lint-free swab or wipe. Mirrors one and two are also easily removable with these quick release thumb screws. Mirror three at the head can be cleaned easily through this lens cover. Now how often these need to be cleaned depends on usage though. 
In our shop, when we're cutting all day, we clean the lens probably every hour or so. This is because we cut a lot of MDF and the glues and resins used in its production create a lot of sticky residue. How often you clean your optics will vary, but it's so easy and quick to do. I really recommend cleaning either before or after every day or every time you use the laser at minimum. It literally takes a minute or two and it's a good habit to get into. One great feature of the Bolt Pro 32 is this accordion style guard that is on both sides of the Y axis. This protects the inside of the machine from smoke and residue, which greatly reduces the need to clean mirror number two. And of course, mirror number one is enclosed in the back of the cabinet, so it's protected as well. I would say mirror number three at the laser head and of course the focus lens are gonna need the most attention on this laser. On to the testing. One thing I would like to note though, in the beginning of each material segment, I'm gonna show about a three second clip or so of my material test card. This will give you the opportunity to pause the video if you want to take a closer look at the card and its detailed results. I'll also have a chapter for each type of material test as well. That way you can easily navigate through the video for future reference. Now, on to the results. Eighth inch or three millimeter MDF core plywood. This is one of our favorite materials for projects. It looks great, is available in lots of different veneers, and is a breeze to cut through with this laser. We use this a lot for cake toppers, door hangers, signs, and ornaments. If you're interested in picking up some of this and it's not available in your local area, check out my video about it here and also check out my Etsy store in the description. Purchasing it through my Etsy store really helps out the channel and my wife and I really appreciate all the support. But check out these results. The Bolt Pro 32 easily slices through this material in upwards of 40 millimeters a second, but usually the range that I'm gonna normally cut this at is in the mid 30s, running at about 80 to 90% power. Quarter inch or five millimeter MDF core plywood. This is definitely our favorite and most used material here in the shop. Because of its thickness, it's more flat than the eighth inch version, but it can also be a bear to cut through. I kind of talked about this earlier, but MDF is a tough material to cut because of how it's produced. It's basically wood dust compressed together with resins, this makes it really stable and flat, but really hard to cut through. But again, check out these speeds. For context, we're used to cutting this material on our original bolts routinely at about six millimeters a second. Being able to cut at over triple the speed is a game changer. And not only are we cutting fast, but we're actually cutting really clean, and that means less post-processing of our products like sanding or wiping soot off with alcohol. As I said before, we cut this material every single day here in the shop, and we are routinely cutting this at around the 20 millimeter per second range, and again, the 80 to 90% power level. Plywood generally is also a tough material to cut. It has a lot of layers, in this case five plies, which means a lot of glue to get through. Glue and lasers do not play well together. You can see here from the material test that we're able to cut this material on the bolt upwards of the 16, 17 millimeter per second range. However, again, we typically wanna be down here around in the 14, 15 millimeter per second range if we're cutting this every day, just to make sure we have good results all the time. As I said before, plywood can have different variations in the layers and the densities. So you typically wanna turn down the speed a little bit just to make sure that you totally get through it all the time. This quarter inch birch plywood is a really durable and strong material, great for signs and backers, and it's a nice option for jobs that are gonna be stained or painted. Next up, half inch sanded plywood I got at Home Depot. This is a material that I personally don't use much around here in my shop, aside from cutting it on the CNC every once in a while. I guess mainly because I never had a laser that could efficiently cut it. So I was curious if the bolt would be able to get through it. I'm pretty happy with these results. I can see this being used as another more robust style of a backer for a door hanger or large sign. I personally will probably explore using this material for laser cut jigs, templates, or other shop upgrades like maybe some French cleat organizers or something like that. And as you can see, we got some pretty good cutting results here in the six millimeter per second area, all along these different power level ranges. Eighth inch clear cast acrylic is something that we use a ton of over here. In fact, we use it so much that one of our original bolts is dedicated to strictly cutting and engraving acrylic. I think acrylic is so popular because it's available in a ton of different colors and patterns, and it's really great for cake toppers, 
keychains, menus, and milestone markers. Really, I would say that clear or colored acrylic is just an overall great wedding type of product material in general. On our original bolt, we're used to cutting this material at about eight millimeters a second. So no surprise here, the Pro 32 bolt gets through this a heck of a lot faster. I mean, we're cutting up in the 35, 34, 33 millimeter per second range at these higher power levels of about 80 to 90 percent. That's so much faster. I just love how much more efficient this machine is. And oh yeah, I also have clear acrylic sheets available for sale on my Etsy page if you're interested in checking that out. Quarter inch or six millimeter clear cast acrylic. We don't use much quarter inch acrylic around here for our products, but it really is versatile like the eighth inch version. As well as the project I already mentioned, you can use this for items like awards or signs, things that need a little bit more rigidity, I guess, because the eighth inch version can be a little bendy and this is really stiff. For example, a lot of times people use this for template making or for jigs. I found best cutting results of this material happened around the 12 or 13 millimeter per second range here at about, again, the 75, 85% power level. Moving on, let's try some solid wood. This is quarter inch solid walnut, and this is a really popular material for ornaments, among other things. You'll notice cutting this is pretty close to the quarter inch birch plywood results, although we are able to get some faster results since this is solid wood and you don't have to deal with all the plies and glue that you're normally cutting through with plywood. The Bolt Pro 32 really sliced through this walnut great. I mean, look at these results. We're getting really great cutting at around the 14, 15 uh, millimeter per second range. And we also got some pretty decent results up here at the 17 millimeter per second range. Half inch cedar fence pickets. This material is popular because it looks cool, it's easy to work with, and is readily available at home centers. I used it before on projects like signs, wall sconces, and of course the ever popular wooden Halloween jack-o'-lanterns. I've made those before but used my CNC. Now these can be cut on my laser. I mean, pretty exciting, right? Look at these results. Again, we're cutting here upwards of the 10 to 11 millimeter per second range, and these are really crisp, clean cuts. Half inch poplar. This is another one of those materials I don't really work with in my laser business, but I wanted to give it a try just to kind of push the limits of the Bolt Pro 32. So if you take a look at my material test card here, you'll see that we're getting some pretty good results around the eight millimeter per second range, all the way from about 75% power up to 100% power. And we even got one drop out at nine millimeters a second. One thing to note when you're cutting materials such as like half inch, like the cedar I cut earlier or this poplar, focus is going to be especially important when you're cutting stuff like this. It's good practice to set your focus a little lower than normal because we basically want the laser to be focused near the middle of this material and not so much on the top. I do this by setting the Z offset in light burn about uh, one or two millimeters inward for this half inch material, which raises the bed just a little bit and lowers my focus more towards the middle of the material. So I'm really happy with these half inch poplar results. I thought maybe this was just gonna be kind of like a torture test and I'd have to go pretty slow to get through this half inch material, but I'm actually getting some really good useful cuts out of this. I can see this or other similar half inch hardware materials being good for products like custom coasters, or even backers for large signs. But tell me, do you ever cut half inch material on your laser? Let me know in the comments and tell me what uses you have for it. I think it's safe to say that this thing can cut. The more I use this laser, the more I can tell it really does live up to its pro name. I had a blast using the Bolt Pro 32 to cut through a bunch of common laser engraving materials. Hopefully this gives you a better idea of its cutting capabilities if you are curious about that. Make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on the next video in this Bolt Pro 32 series. I think next we'll see how this thing engraves. What do you think? Do you have any questions about this laser or would you like to see something specific? Leave a comment down below and let me know. So I really hope you found this video helpful. If you're interested in some of the materials that I use during the testing of this video, go check out my Etsy page where I offer them for sale. Doing so really helps out the channel and I really appreciate it. If you liked this video, don't forget to check out my other laser and CNC videos showing up on your screen in just a few seconds. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.